Father, we have come to give honor. Father, we have come to give adoration. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. And you are worthy of all adoration. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Our Father, this morning, we, this evening, we have come to give glory to you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Your faithfulness is everywhere. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Accept our thanksgiving this evening in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now, Lord, our eyes are upon you tonight. We ask that you speak to us by your word. Let your word transform each one of our lives. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise God. Tonight, we are going to begin looking at God's word in this teaching captioned, Understanding the Power of Thanksgiving. <laughs> Understanding the Power of Thanksgiving. Understanding the Power of Thanksgiving. Psalm chapter 47 and verse 7. God's word declares that we are to sing praises with understanding. In other words, the effectiveness of our praise is determined by the understanding with which we engage. In this kingdom, nothing is outstanding without understanding. Nothing is outstanding without understanding. And praise, being one of the simple mysteries of the kingdom, is loaded with untold power. But the power that emerges from praise and thanksgiving is determined by the understanding with which we engage. Ephesians 1 verse 17 to verse 19, it says that God will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And verse 19, it says that, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us that believe according to the working of his mighty power. So there is a demand for understanding that triggers the manifestation of God's power in our direction. And that is why it's so important that we explore this subject so that our thanksgiving can continue to provoke unusual manifestations. And that will be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ. Now what must we know about thanksgiving? First of all, thanksgiving is what we owe God both as individuals and as a church. It is a debt that we owe. It is a debt that we owe. Luke chapter 17, verse 17 to verse 19, after the ten lepers were cleansed, one of them came back and gave glory to God. And Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? None has come to give glory to God except this stranger. Were there not ten cleansed? So every act of God in the direction of any man puts that man in debt to God. And that is why we must understand that when it comes to this action of gratitude, it is the payment of a standing debt. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, the word of God said, we are bound to give thanks always. 
We are bound. We are bound to give thanks. We are under obligation to give thanks unto God always. There is no time that you are not in debt to God. You may be out of human debt, but you can never be out of divine debt. That is a permanent debt that you will keep owing God. You will keep owing him both on earth and you will still be paying that debt in heaven. Why do I say so? When you pray, prayer continues on the earth. And there is a memorial. The Bible tells us that there are stores of prayers in heaven that are contained in vials. So you can pray so much that your prayer will still be stored in heaven. But you can't thank so much that there's storage of prayer in heaven. The Bible says even the 24 elders beside the throne, they are casting their thrones down, bowing down, worshiping him, celebrating him. So that debt of thanksgiving, you can't finish paying it here. But you must pay a good chunk of it here so that you won't get to heaven too far in debt. Is somebody getting it now? You won't get to heaven too far in debt. You know, debt is in categories. If you have old before, you know. It's in categories. There are different levels of debt. There is a dimension of debt that you go to that they must not meet you. <laughs> Every encounter is an embarrassment. There is the type that you can still go to the office and discuss and explain and say, you see, you should try and understand. I'm working on it. After all, I still paid some last, last time. I'm working on it. Just have patience. That's the type you should have with God, not the one that you'll be dodging, even in heaven. God. <laughs> shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Say with me, it's a debt I owe. Say louder, it's a debt I owe. And I must pay it. Say louder, I must pay it. And I tell you something, it's a bad thing when the person you are owing is always seeing you. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. If it's always, and the Bible said, God does not sleep or slumber. He doesn't sleep or slumber. And if you get to heaven, you are always there. There's no night. The Bible says that there is no day, there is no night, there's no need for sun. So there's nowhere to hide. Say with me, I will pay my debt. Say loud, I will pay my debt. So it's a debt that we owe. It's a debt that we owe. And you can never be out of that debt. That is why you must always continue to pay for that debt. In fact, I put it this way, that Thanksgiving is actually not only a debt that we owe, but we can never outpay it because we are still owing debt as we are paying it. Think about it. He said, let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. So your breath is given to you by God, for which you must praise God. Now, what do you use to speak? Breath. So you are using debt to pay debt. Hello? You can never come to the point where you are out of it. That is why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. There is no time that is not thanking time. Always, at every point in time, keep giving glory to God. Ephesians 5, the Bible tells us in verse 20, it says to us there, giving thanks, what? Always. So there is no time that is not thanking time. We must keep giving him thanks because we owe him thanks. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Secondly, it's important to know that it takes thanksgiving to provoke the stretching forth of the hand of God upon our lives. It takes thanksgiving to provoke the stretching forth of the hand of God upon our lives. It takes thanksgiving. In Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4, it said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him 
and bless his holy name. So instigating God in your matter requires thanksgiving and praise. Involving God in your matter requires thanksgiving and praise. God's servant our father has always said, you cannot be grateful and not be joyful. A grateful man is a joyful man. Psalm 92 and verse 1, the word of God tells us there very clearly. He said, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. He said, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. When you are truly grateful, there is a tone of joy inside of you. Gratitude leaves you with joy. Shout hallelujah. It leaves you with joy joy. You cannot be grateful and not be joyful. You cannot be joyful and not be praiseful. When joy is authentic, praise is the evidence. In James chapter 5 verse 13, the word of God tells us there, he said, is any merry, let him sing. So the authentic proof of the validity of joy inside of a man is the potency of praise. Imagine from that individual. And you cannot be praiseful and not be Godful. Psalm chapter 22 and verse 3, it said, Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. And you cannot be Godful and not be wonderful. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 114, verse 1 down to verse 7, it said there, it said, when Israel came out of Egypt, it said, and they came out of the people of a strange language, it said, Judah was his sanctuary. Israel was his dominion. They were full of God. And what was the effect? The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The hills began to skip like rams, and the little hills like little lambs. He said, Now, what ailed thee, O sea, that thou fledest? And Jordan, that thou was driven back. And you mountains that you skip like rams, and little hills like little lambs, tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. You can't carry God and lack wonders. Everyone that is praiseful ends up Godful. And those that are Godful end up wonderful. Their lives become fountains of wonders. For somebody, that will be your own experience. Your life shall become a fountain of wonders. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I say your life will become a fountain of wonders. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in thanksgiving, we are simply paying a debt that we owe. In thanksgiving, we are provoking the stretching forth of God's hand to begin to walk on our behalf. Let's be reminded this evening that a man can receive nothing except to be given him from above. Whatever you have is as has been given. We are not achievers in this kingdom. We are receivers. No matter what is in your hand, it is not by power or by might that he got there. It is the hand of God that delivered it to you. Therefore, if we have received it, then we have a responsibility to celebrate the one from whom we received it. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, the Bible makes us understand there. It says, who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you glory as if you received it not? Why are you posing? Why are you boasting? Why are you not glorifying God? Why are you not celebrating him? So you and I must understand that we have a debt to pay in celebrating God. We must understand that as we are doing so, his hand is stretched forth on our behalf. I must understand that any good thing you have seen in any department of your life is not by you, but by him. And as a result of that, we must return the glory to him. We must return the glory to him. Therefore, we must remind ourselves tonight that we must continue to acknowledge God for his goodness and his mercy in every department of our lives in order to retain his blessing. 
we must continue to acknowledge. Psalm chapter 136, we saw it during the um, personal supplication session. Psalm 136, verse 1 to 3. Look at this very closely. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. Why? For his mercy endures forever. Verse 2. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Why? For his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. Why? For his mercy endureth forever. God's word declares to us in Lamentation 3 and verse 22 and 23. He said there, he said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. He said, because his compassions failed not. And verse 23, they are new. Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. What that means is that there is no day that you don't partake of God's mercy. There is no day that you don't partake of God's mercy. It is the same road that you take that others die on. And you pass the road every day. The mercy of God covering you. The grace of God preserving you. It is not because you are smarter than others. There are deaths that you could have died that you are not aware of. That the mercy of God shielded you from. It's so important for us to understand the word of God tells us. It is not of him that willeth, Romans 9, 16, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It's of God. God's servant has always said, it is what happened that you know. What could have happened you are not aware of. If God could open your eyes to see the various occurrences in the realm of the spirit that he blocked without you being able to be aware, you will understand the necessity of gratitude. You will understand the necessity of gratitude. Being grateful to God for his mercies that have been new every single morning. You woke up in the morning, you're about to go out, you have a nudging in your spirit. Don't go, don't go to where you are trying to go. And you still go. And you told yourself, but I went, but nothing happened. You don't know how many things God blocked that day. Because in that error, you should have been destroyed. In that error, you should have been destroyed. So many of us don't have any clue of what it is that God delivered us from. I believe that if anyone has the opportunity to be consistently aware, it can run a person mad. How many can you pray against? How many can you defend against? Is it pestilences, arrows, all of them flying continuously, both in the day and in the night? There are people who think that attack is in the night. It's both day and night. It's both day and night. It's not only in the night. Satan attacks different times, different ways, different agendas. But yet, look at yourself. This is December of 2021. Every single day, the mercy of God has never failed. Never failed. Never failed. Will you lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. One more time, say, thank you, Jesus. Like you mean it, say, thank you, Jesus. Like you are sure about it, say, thank you, Jesus. So we must continue to acknowledge, continue to acknowledge his mercy, his goodness. I see grace upon each one of us to keep acknowledging this in Jesus' name. Now, quickly this evening, what are we thanking God for? Let's highlight a few things that we are thanking God for. Number one, for all his benefits, all his benefits, including forgiveness, healing, deliverance, continuous supplies, and total well-being. All his benefits. Psalm chapter 103 verse 1 to 5. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. What are they? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So look at all of those benefits. Forgiving our sins, healing our sicknesses and diseases, deliverances, different dimensions of supernatural supply. These are the doings of the Lord. Granting us total well-being. There are some people here that have never landed in the hospital from January to date. Are you smarter than others? Are you stronger than others? It's the doing of the Lord. Somebody said, but pastor, I, I was actually sick in the course of the year. Who healed you? Only God did. There are others that entered with the same condition, entered the hospital and didn't come out. But yet, he sustained you, he healed you, he forgave you, he supplied your needs. Somebody will say, but pastor, I still have many things that I need. If he didn't supply the basic one, you won't be here to have other needs. Hello? If you have anything from January, you think you'll still be around? You won't be around. So he must have given you food. You see, it's important that we must understand that if you look around your life and it looks like you have things that you require, it is because there are things that you did not need to demand that is supplied for you. That is why you are still here to have other desires. Is somebody getting it now? Oh, but I wanted to get married, and I'm not yet married. Hear me, if you were sick, marriage would not be on your agenda. Proper sickness, marriage is not on the program. Hello? It's not on the program, it's not on the program. But I was vying for contract, and I didn't, I, I didn't get the contract after all. And I prayed, oh, I prayed, oh, I prayed, oh. If you were properly sick, it won't be contract you are thinking about. It, won't be. it is God who has blessed you. And giving you benefits beyond what you can demand. Hello? So, we are thanking him for his benefits. His numerous benefits. Has anybody here benefited from God at all? Uh, are you sure? Have you benefited from God at all? In this year, 2021, have you benefited from God at all? Will you lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus? One more time, thank you, Jesus. Like you really mean it, thank you, Jesus. Number two. Number two reason we are thanking him is for his wondrous works in our lives. And for triumph all through the year. Psalm 78, verse 42 to 55. It is dangerous not to acknowledge the wonders of God. Look at what the word of God says, verse 42. It says to us there... They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. And look at what it says. How that he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And he turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He said in verse 45, he sent divers sort of flies among them and devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He said in verse 46, he gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locust. Verse 47, he destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore, with the, with, sycamore trees with frost. Verse 48, he gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to the hot thunderbolts. And verse 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Verse 50, he said he made a way to his anger and he spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence. Verse 51, he said he smote the firstborn in Egypt and the chief of their strength in the tabernacle of Ham. Verse 52, but he made his own people to go forth like a sheep. He guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He said, and he led them on safely so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. 
verse 54, he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. And verse 55, he cast out the heathen before them and divided them an inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Look at all the wonders. But he started in verse 42 say, by saying, they remember not. It is amazing how many things we forget. As far as the wonders of God are concerned. If you look at your life from January till date, the wonders are numerous. The wonders of God. The wonders of God. And we must give quality thanks for his wonders in our lives. He said, I did all these wonders. I led them in the wilderness. They were moving like a flock. They, they lived their life without fear. They entered into the tents that I vacated by their enemies. He said they went safely and then the sea overwhelmed the enemies. All of these wonders I did, but yet they remembered not. They remembered not. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 12, it said, beware lest you forget. One of the very, very disturbing traits of man is the speed of forgetfulness. The speed of forgetfulness. Tell a person, take this sheet of paper and write all the things you are thankful to God for. You will see the person cracking brain. I say, take this sheet of paper. Write what you are expecting from God from. He will be asking for more. Please, another sheet. Please, another sheet. I remember one year, God someone told us, your expectation card is one. Because there are some people. They will staple it. Not just expectation, but that's expectation card and then proper A4 paper. Everything complete. Why? They are expecting. God, God, God must perform. God must perform. You know, during the last month when we were doing one thing at a time, you know, some people had a serious problem. <laughs> my issue is more than one. One per week, only one thing per week. My, my issue is more than that. Ah. My issue is more than that. Even if we are going to do seven Sundays, that means only seven things. Ah, Father. My own challenge is more than that. It's more than that. Somebody said the testimony said the first Sunday, they said many things. Nothing happened. Then the next, <laughs> the next Sunday, they now adjusted and agreed to come down to one thing. Why? Because when it comes to man, expectation, expectation is plenty, but appreciation is minimal. Appreciation is minimal. I'd like you to understand, people of God, this evening, that when it comes to the wonders of God, beware lest you forget. Beware lest you forget. In thanking God, we must be grateful for the wonders and for the diverse triumphs that he gave us in the course of the year. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. God's word declares to us there. He said, thanks be to God which causes us to triumph in Christ. He causes us always to triumph. And makes manifest the savour of his knowledge in every place. He causes us to triumph. We are beneficiaries of triumph. So you and I must remain grateful. Shout hallelujah. Look at this year, how many victories you won. How many battles you overcame. There are times where you thought you would not make it. You thought you would not be able to come out. You thought this time, finally, it looks as if you have been defeated. But yet he brought you out. Triumph after triumph. Victory after victory. Beware lest you forget. Beware lest you you forget. Beware lest you forget. I see each one of us today 
receiving grace to maintain a life of gratitude. What else are we thanking him for? Number three, for his abounding grace and continuous scaling of new heights. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. So we are grace made. We are not self made. Any height you scale is by the hand of God. First Samuel chapter 12 and in verse 6, it was God that advanced Moses and Aaron. They didn't advance themselves. They didn't advance any height you scale, any promotion you saw, any elevation you tasted was by the hand of God. Hello? Was by the hand of God. Don't deceive yourself. You were not the best in that promotion exercise. God just lifted you. He blinded them to your errors and opened their eyes to what looked like your efforts. Is somebody getting it now? It is simply the hand of God. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 75, verse 6 and verse 7. Promotion comes not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Verse 7. He said, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. If you went up, it was by God. If you went up, it was by God. Don't deceive yourself. Every advancement, it was God pushing you forward. Hello? Anytime you neglect to give glory to God, he leaves you and exposes your weakness. It was God pushing you forward. Some people entered into inter interviews and you began to speak and even what you are saying, you know it's not you saying it. He just took over your tongue and began to give you an expertise that you did not, you did not possess. You finish talking, they say, no, this kind of person, this is an, it's an unusual person. That's what happened to Joseph. When Joseph finished, even Pharaoh knew this is not ordinary. Pharaoh said, uh, this one, we can't find a man like this. A man in whom the spirit of God is. So they knew that those, those utterances were from the spirit. Every promotion, every elevation, Every advancement has been by the hand of God, not by your effort. Shout hallelujah. Somebody shared a testimony. He said that his, he had been stag, she had been stagnated for promotion for a number of years. And then when she went to God concerning that promotion, suddenly she was called one day and said, where are you? Why are you not in the exam hall? Exam hall for promotion, ex, 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 you know, exercise. And they gave her a time. You must appear in that hall by so-so and so time. There was no way to go from where she was to arrive in the examination hall, which means that promotion again has been sabotaged. She said, I went to God at Shiloh. Far down, this promotion. I must get it. And then suddenly entered into the new year. And then got the promotion without having written the exam. And backdated it to give us some benefits of the past. Why? The hand of God pushing her forward. You see, there are times that God just does certain things to show you that it's not you. That it's not you at all. It just moves you forward. So that you can tell that it's not by power or by might. But this is by the operation of the Spirit of the Lord. Is somebody getting it? You may say, I've not gotten to where I want to go, but you are not where you used to be. Who moved you from where you used to be to where you are now? The hand of God. He kept pushing you forward. He kept moving you forward. He kept moving you upward. I see each one of us having our eyes open to this lifestyle of gratitude. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, for his faithfulness in our lives. For his faithfulness in our lives. You see, the faithfulness of God is the backbone of the confidence of man. The faithfulness of God 
is the backbone of the confidence of man. The faithfulness of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. He said he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. God is the only one that every time you call we answer. There is no human being, no matter how well intentioned, that can answer you every time. Hello? Haven't you had miss, miss call before? Answer me. Have you not had miss call before? What does miss call mean? Somebody called, you missed it. That's the meaning of miss call. Can you imagine if God now began to have miss call with all the challenges that you have, all the issues you are confronted with? <laughs> You are in a corner one day and then the issue is thick. It's a life or death matter. And you call, God miss it. Or you called, there was no network. You see, we take for granted many things. You have a challenge, you enter into the corner and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I call on you now to step in. And he hears you and steps in. Only God can answer every call. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you. Matthew 7 8. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Only God can answer every call. Only God can answer every call. Make no mistake about it. Never take the faithfulness of God for granted. Never take the faithfulness of God for granted. Never take the faithfulness of God for granted. Some years ago, I shared it before, I was in church and I was ministering, and I told them, I said, many of you, you have so much confidence. If I call pastor, it will pick. If I call pastor, if, if there's any challenge, I call. I said, there is a day you will call, there will be no network. One woman was in the church, she laughed. She laughed very well that day. Then she went home. And then one day, in the course of the same week, she had a challenge in the office. They rushed her to the hospital. The word they put her in, she carried phone to call. There was not one single bar. When she saw the phone, she said, hey, and pastor said this thing on Sunday. No, no network. At that time, she now turned to God. Father, you must deliver me. You must set me free. You just have to deliver me now. Now, only God could have answered that call at that time. Because he abides faithful. He can never deny himself. That is the God we serve. The one that does not sleep or slumber. The one that can give attention to every individual at the same time. Do you know how many of us are calling God the same time? And he's answering each one of us the same time? You are here in Nigeria, somebody, and you know the world is so different. People have different time zones. When you are sleeping, somebody is waking. And all of them are calling him at the same time. Night, day, day, night. And he's answering us day, night, night, and day. Say with me, I serve a faithful God. Say it louder, I serve a faithful God. Like your minute, I serve a faithful God. So we are thanking him for his faithfulness. And finally, we are thanking him for the blessings anticipated. The blessings anticipated. One of the secrets of securing your desires is appreciating him in advance. Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fishes. He was expecting much more than that to feed 5,000 men, minus women and children. He gave thanks in advance for what he was expecting, and he received it. He got to the tomb of Lazarus. He was not expecting to live there and leave a dead man there, but he gave thanks in advance for the resurrection of Lazarus. And he received it. If there is a blessing that is yet to come, send the advance party of thanksgiving and the blessing will arrive. Is somebody getting it? There is something you are still expecting to see happen before the year concludes. Send thanksgiving ahead. It will always come back with a testimony. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So, for any blessing you are anticipating, start thinking. Start thanking, start appreciating, start celebrating, and you will see the blessing start manifesting. It will manifest in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Lift your hand to heaven this evening and give thanks to God. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of all praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Before we go any further tonight, the word of God declares, the living, the living shall praise thee as I do this day. Only those who are in Christ can have praise and thanksgiving that is acceptable to God. Wherever you are this night, both here in Canaan land at the U Chapel, or in any one of our zones across Lagos or Town or maybe you are just watching at home, watching online, wherever it is that you are. And you know that you need to surrender to Jesus. You need to become a child of God in truth and in deed. You need to become one identified by Jesus. Quickly, I want you to rise on your feet now. 